Hey, what's going on, guys? Pokey here. Now, unfortunately, Battlefield 2042, yeah, it's delayed. I'm sad about it. You're sad about it. But that does not take away the hype for me, and I'm sure a lot of new people who haven't even played any of the games in the Battlefield franchise. And they're looking at all these hype trailers and all that good stuff, and they're thinking, you know what? This might be the first Battlefield I want to jump into. I want to know how to play the game. Well, here are a few basic quick tips that'll help new players, or maybe even players who just aren't familiar with the more modern Battlefield games, because they are different from the older games. So let's jump into it. All right, tip number one, let's just get down to it. Don't worry about your kill-death ratio. It's Battlefield. No one cares. You'll die often, okay? Whether it's going to be from land, air, sea, any angle you can imagine, okay? You're going to die. It's part of the chaos in Battlefield, and you just have to get used to it. It's okay. Your kill-death ratio is not going to matter, unless you're playing... I don't know what hazard zone's going to be. It, it sounds interesting. I think your lives are going to be limited. I, I don't know what it is. But where you're not doing objective-based play, yeah, maybe your kill-death ratio might matter. But that's an exception. Your kill-death ratio simply boils down to what type of role you want to play, right? So aggressive players, they want to get on the front lines. They'll have generally lower kill-death ratios. They're using submachine guns. They don't have far range. They can't really distance themselves from danger, as well as like a sniper, for example, who sits further away back, or even some of the players that are usually in tanks, like a high-powered armored vehicle. Just worry about racking up your points in every way possible, and then your kills, they'll naturally happen. The reason why you shouldn't care about your kill-death ratio is because the game is really all about just winning with your team, right? One of the hardest things to do is taking on an enemy tank that's in a strong position, also being supported by infantry, in my opinion, okay? If you see an enemy tank and it's in a strong position, your whole goal is to take out that tank. I don't care if I die seven, eight, or nine times. If I take that tank out, all I know is that I'm tipping the balance of power back to my team again. And that's usually when you're playing an assault class. You can even be helpful by just being a simple medic. You don't need a great shot. I see medics at the top of the leaderboard that are like 0 and 23 or something like that. And they'll still get first place because of how much value they add to their team. Reviving them when they're down. Just sticking by your teammates and giving them health. You don't need a great shot, you know. So just don't be afraid to get yourself dirty right up in the action and just be behind your teammates and support them throughout the way. Whether you're defending a point or if you're attacking... Medic's always a great class to start out with. All right, tip number two is to be helpful. Provide value, right? You want your teammates to fall in love with you as a teammate. Battlefield is large-scaled, so that means there's bigger maps. The game modes, hey, they might be intimidating at first. So if you find yourself confused and running around wondering what you should be doing, always ask yourself this. Am I helping my team right now? Generally, if you are doing something that is earning yourself experience, XP, you are probably helping your team. Whether it's capturing or defending objective points, this is really the most important one. Most people play Conquest, so yeah, do that. Throwing out ammo and health, reviving down teammates, spotting enemy soldiers and vehicles, repairing vehicles, and putting down equipment, giving and following squad orders, or you can just be that madman who just hunts tanks and air threats. Pretty much get that XP. Just try to play the objective. Fill a role, rack up those points, and don't be afraid to change that role and adapt as the game goes on. The battle will progress. It inevitably changes. You cannot just stay one class. I mean, a lot of the time you can, right? But if your team really needs the points, then you really shouldn't sit back as a sniper. Teamwork makes the dream work. I can assure you that being helpful and just providing value and helping secure your team in a close victory is way more beneficial than having a high kill-death ratio, right? We talked about this before. Who cares? And speaking of snipers, tip number three. I have a love and hate relationship with snipers. If you've seen my other videos, you know I like to snipe. I enjoy it in most first-person shooters. And I don't want to discourage anyone from sniping because Battlefield has some of the absolute best sniping mechanics, I think, in modern FPS games. It's really satisfying to crack some domes with that class. Especially on really large and open maps where there's a little bit of bullet drop and it takes some skill. With that being said, nothing is more frustrating than being on an attacking team where seemingly half of your team is hanging back to sniping. And they're not doing it good. They're bad at it. And not helping your team advance in any way. It feels like you're playing tug of war, right? And you look around at half of your team not even holding on to the rope. Nothing unbalances a match and kills a server faster than when people don't play the objective and then one team gets steamrolled and it's frequently due to the bottom half of the team being snipers. 
trying to snipe from hundreds of meters away, furthest away from the action as possible, providing no value, right? Nobody, and I mean nobody, in the history of Battlefield has ever said, hey, can we get some more snipers on our team? No. Hey, and you're going to find really good snipers. There's guys that are hitting headshot after headshot. They know how to lead their shots. They're constantly pushing forward, and then they encroach the enemy and keeping a steady flow of enemy spotting, and they're doing the right thing. There are some great snipers that play this game. It's a beautiful thing to watch. They readily will switch their loadouts as things change and then aren't sticking with the same sniper class for the whole game. You can be a sniper when it makes sense to be a sniper. Good snipers will watch over their squad mates in front of them and not just go off on their own to snipe. If you don't get good at the class, it's okay to be bad with the class. If you're really not trying to push into the enemy and be irritating like that, then you more than likely should be playing one of the more helpful roles, at least when you begin playing Battlefield. You shouldn't be starting as a sniper, but if you want to, Dude, I don't care. You can be a sniper. I'm just saying, is it going to help your team in most cases? Not always, unless you're a good sniper and you know how to play it. So for the most part, if I was starting Battlefield, I'd much rather be more comfortable being medic support and anti-vehicle until you get the hang of sniping. Hey, try it out. Don't feel discouraged, but use the class as it's intended. You want to be efficient. Tip number four for the Warzone players or the overall Call of Duty player. First of all, we are happy to have you. I play Call of Duty all the time. I loved Modern Warfare 2019. I played the multiplayer way more than Warzone, and I think they did a great job. But here's the thing. A lot of Call of Duty players, their ego completely cracks sometimes when they're playing Battlefield because they think they need a high kill-death ratio to be considered a good player. That is not the case at all. I've been playing Call of Duty since the first Call of Duty came out on computer. Uh, I play Call of Duty 2 competitively, Call of Duty 4 competitively at a high level. The game is a lot different than Battlefield, and I've been playing Call of Duty to this day, and I still think it's a fantastic game, but there's a few things that you have to remember when you're playing Battlefield. The maps are open. They're gigantic compared to Call of Duty, right? Call of Duty has three lanes, left, middle, right. I mean, there's a little variation sometimes. I think Modern Warfare 2019 did a good job with verticality and having more than like three pathways to go about a situation. But for the most part, Call of Duty, it's pretty cookie cutter. And because of that, you're going to have a lot of close combat situations. Battlefield will get you pissed off, right? <laughs> You'll just be spawning in on your squad mates and you'll just die from a tank or you'll get ran over by something. Um, an RPG just randomly hits you. You're getting sniped from some guy. You don't even see their sniper from any distance at all. The game is random in how you die. Whereas in Call of Duty, I mean, for me, like just pub stomping, I would just look at my mini map and we would have a UAV going. I would just see where all the red dots are coming from. And you can just really stare at that and be a good player. And if you have a good shot, you don't even really have to be that smart. And that's not to shit on Call of Duty players. I play Call of Duty, like I said, I play Call of Duty since the very beginning. I still like the game. I think the gameplay is fantastic. But let's be honest, it's very casual linear, and at times it's like a handheld experience. Battlefield maps are obviously, they're much larger, there's more players, and especially this time, it's going to be 64 versus 64, okay? You're going to die from a lot of random shit, and if your ego can't take dying more than five times in a match, well, maybe this game is just not for you. The game's going to require you to think about your positioning and tactics, much more than just relying on your quick reaction time around every corner. Yeah, it's going to help you. I think Modern Warfare 2019 really helped me with the close quarters play of Call of Duty, and it's helped my gun skill in those situations that's transferred over into Battlefield. But the pacing overall, it's going to be a tad slower, right? The maps are going to be bigger. You're playing in 128 player servers, but you can play very aggressively. If you can surround yourself in chaos and be all right with that, you can frequent gunfights along the front lines, and especially with how big these maps are going to be, how popular they're going to be, you can find your own little niche within the map and find a more linear focus mode like Breakthrough and you can still be in places where there's just a lot of infantry. Aside from the map flow just being completely different, uh, another thing to consider is the destruction. Right, Call of Duty, I was really frustrated in this last Call of Duty, not Cold War, I didn't even play that one, but Modern Warfare 19, where if someone was camping, you couldn't really do anything about it except for run up the stairs and die to their claymore or them just camping the stairs. The game was terrible when it came to footsteps. Everyone just sat around. It was really annoying.
but they did end up changing it a little bit, but it still wasn't that fun. Now what you can do if there's a camper, just blow the whole side of the building off and then expose them. That's all you gotta do. Or like in Verdansk when you're playing Warzone, like that little tree or fence that stopped your whole vehicle dead in his tracks and then he just died. Yeah, you can just run those over now. Guys, that's all I really got. Um, hey, if you're a Call of Duty player, if you're an old Battlefield player, if you're new to the franchise, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this game, Battlefield 2042. I'm hoping for a steady launch, hoping for a smooth launch, and yeah, I'll see you on the Battlefield, whether you're on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, let's have a great time. Like and subscribe if you like the video, and want more content like this, and uh, we'll see you until next time. Take care.